Welcome back to the Gadget Show live right here in the Birmingham NEC. My name is Total Biscuit. I'm going to be bringing you a part of the double elimination, folks. We are through the group stages, and we're going to be bringing you Naniwa versus Bling in a best of three. Obviously, one of these guys is going down to the loser's bracket after this particular matchup. So it should be interesting. More PvP action coming in from these guys. Naniwa, of course, one of the best in, in the world. Bling, an aspiring champion. And you can hear the countdown in the background as we go into this game, and it's going to be on the crevasse to kick us off right now. Should be interesting, folks. Should be interesting. Now, I don't know if Bling is going to be able to hold up against Naniwa, honestly. Naniwa's four gateway attack is probably one of the best in the world, and pretty much everything about him is. I mean, his mechanics are astonishing in almost every respect. We'll find out, folks. We will find out, because I bring you Naniwa in the pink trunks right here, playing Protoss right here on the crevasse. He's up to the northwest versus his opponent, Bling, in the orange trunks. He is playing Protoss as well. And he's down to the southeast. They're both these guys from the same team, Team Dignitas. So we'll find out exactly who is the best in terms of PvP right now. Now, Bling has been kind of the dark horse of this particular tournament, and you, you can't really blame anyone for saying that, really, because you've got five international level players, and then you've got Bling, who only recently joined Dignitas after the Gamer Search. He won that tournament, so he's their new newest recruit, but he's been brought in to fill some of the gaps from players who are not able to attend for whatever reason, which is unfortunate, because it's also the reason we don't have any Zerg. But whatever the case, he has been doing a reasonable good job, actually. He managed to take out Select in the group stages. He's won a couple of games. He's certainly not doing as well as the other guys here, but he's holding his own, and we'll have to see just how good he is in a PvP sort of style. Naniwa is more than capable of playing PvP, without question. He's keeping an eye on things right now, scouting out various areas, not even bothering to actually go into the base for the time being. Let's we'll see what he decides to do. It could be 4-gate versus 4-gate. It wouldn't surprise me, I and mean, it shouldn't really surprise you in any PvP, but especially not one with Naniwa involved in it. A very aggressive player, nothing wrong with that at all. Bling, also quite an aggressive player. And to be honest, I wouldn't want to go into a macro game with Naniwa. That seems like a fairly silly thing to do. But you never know. You never know how this is going to turn out. These guys have no doubt played before. However, we haven't seen them play in a tournament setting. Indeed, this is one of Bling's first tournaments. In fact, I think it's his first offline tournament since the game of search so his nerves have been showing just a little bit he's trying to get used to playing in the line environment and i don't blame him for that nobody should we'll find out how well he does so the next score going around for him a little bit ahead of 91 not a huge deal i think 91 actually put the gateway down on 13 as opposed to 12 so that would be the reason for the short delay no big deal one way or the other it's impossible to say what Naniwa is planning on doing right now, or indeed Bling. That's just the way the Protoss v Protoss is. You can have a look at the first few minutes, and either it's like, well, I'm going to put down a Forge and I'm going to Cannon Rush, or I'm going to put down two Gateways, and I'm going to two Gateway Zealot Rush, often from a proxy position outside of his actual base. And then that's kind of it. He is saving Chrono Boost, which is something to bear in mind. So he's now Chrono Boosted out a Stalker, and is Chrono Boosting the Cybernetics Core as well. I would say a four Gateway attack is very likely right now it really is things blings also doing the same thing so if it's four gate versus four gate i would call it in favor of naniwa but you never know folks you never know bling might pull out a few surprises bling driving naniwa's probe away a fairly good idea two more gateways coming down for bling the question is, Naniwa actually is not going to foregate because he's going right into another assimilator right now, but Bling is almost certainly going to do just that. Will Naniwa be able to hold that four gateway attack? We will find out. If anyone can do it, then Naniwa can do it. Naniwa pushes forward once again, keeping an eye on things. Two more gateways coming down for Naniwa. He actually is going for the four gate, but he does have an assimilator up as well. He's not mining out of it yet, though. Interesting stuff. We'll see what he decides to do. Four gateway into Stargate is not unheard of. In fact, in control does it quite a bit, so we'll find out. Bling! Get out of there. Get, just leave. Go on. Off you go. Excellent play. Right, now Bling, go, sh go shoot him. Go on. Go on. Do something like that. Anything like that. Destructible debris got in the way of the shots, folks. That is simply the way of it. And there's three gateways finishing off for Naniwa now, and they're open for Bling. The question is, what kind of position does Bling really have? Naniwa has control of the majority of this map, so really I don't honestly see where Bling could really put this pile on, if anywhere. Naniwa's actually gone for Twilight Council, following that up. Also something that In Control has been known to do. In Control likes to open up with four gates. He just does. He builds four gateways, and... 
he then goes into something. It'll either be a Twilight Cancel, a Robo, or a Stargate. And he's been known to do all three of these to great success. So it doesn't surprise me that other players in the scene are also doing that. Blink is on its way up for Naniwa. That could be a threat for Blink. If Blink does decide to go for this four gateway attack, which is just not looking likely right now, he's actually going to go into a robotics facility. He's sort of petered out on that. He's got both of his gas available now as well. So, nope, no four gateway there. Not, can you really blame him? <laughs> Map control in control of Naniwa. Honestly, I, I don't really think that Blink could even get anywhere near. And this is the problem, because we're going to be going into a sort of macro-centric game against Naniwa. I, I just, if I were Protoss, I would be highly worried right now. Army Supply and Worker Supply, however, are slightly in favor of Bling. It's certainly not a lost cause. I don't want to call it against Bling right now. No way. Because PvP has this tendency of not so much being a toss-up, but a lot of upsets can happen in PvP. It's a very brutal matchup, and a single misstep can change the game in a very significant manner. Scouting Pro gets annihilated very easily. Naniwa continues with the push, and he does have that forward pylon. Naniwa now transitioning into, by the looks of a four gateway stalker push with Blink, which works perfectly well. Forcefield tries to divide it, but actually that does nothing other than blocks the Zealot out. So that's not effective right now at all. Bling with an additional warp in. He doesn't have anything to follow it up with. If his opponent, Naniwa, has gone for that, he needs to get an immortal out right now. He needs to get an immortal out yesterday. He is working it right now. The thing is, Naniwa should be able to melt it. And that's what he's looking for. He takes the sentry out. He should be able to snipe that off very easily. He does so. Bling's forces trying to hold the line. If that immortal comes out, that'll be it. He needs to chrono boost that almost immediately. However, those Blink stalkers are proving to be uh, way too much for Bling right now. He's able to push him away, though. That Immortal coming out on the field is going to make a huge difference to Blink. Will Blink be able to hold it? He doesn't have any energy in those sentries now. Just throwing it all away right there on that single force field. Trying to hold him back, getting his Immortal in the field. Will he be able to do a good counter push? The thing is, Naniwa's just going to Blink away as soon as he sees that Immortal. Unless he has the number count, which he might actually. He might take a huge amount of losses, but it's not going to make too much of a difference because he's already walking them around. There you go. Blink's one away. No damage done. It fires too slowly. Blink able to do nothing right there. Naniwa in a great position right now, sitting on at nine stalkers versus four. And his economy is slightly weaker than Bling, but it doesn't make too much of a difference because units lost is massively in favor of Naniwa. Looking for the push once again. 13 stalkers on the field. There's the Blink. And this could be the crushing blow that finishes Bling off right here. Blink cannot hold this. He doesn't have the numbers for it. 10 versus five. Pulls the pros of the lane. Immortal comes in to try and change things around a bit, but unfortunately taken out in three volleys in the process. A few more stalkers annihilated. Blink pushing him away. And he's not going to give up just yet, but he's going to concede that pro advantage if he keeps taking pressure like that gg ladies and gentlemen there you go and the first game goes in favor of naniwa we should be going quite rapidly into the second game folks so do stick around we shouldn't have to go into a break right now honestly it doesn't really surprise me that it worked out in the way that it did and the immortal came out too late anyway and really the problem is when you've got blink on the field that that immortal isn't going to make any difference it fires too slowly it's going to do, take one shot two shot and then you've got an eternity to blink that stalker all the way back and unless you're a platinum league player or lower you can easily pull that off so you need multiple immortals really to make that work a single immortal will not do the job and naniwa of course proving that his control is exceptional looking to try and get into the second game as rapidly as as possible folks if we can get in immediately we can if not of course we'll have to roll a few sponsor messages you are of course watching the one and only gadget show live right here from the Birmingham NEC in the heart of the UK with myself total biscuit we've got five thousand pounds on the line sponsored by Alienware for these players and it's a very small tournament which means that there's a very real possibility a lot of these guys are gonna walk away with a large sum of money are you ready for more violence, ladies and gentlemen? I certainly hope so. The second matchup coming on right here, we've got the uh, Terminus SE being the uh, place of battle. We've got Naniwa and Bling. Bling is already one game down. If he loses this one, he will be knocked down into the loser's bracket of this double elimination format. I bring you Naniwa in the pink trunks. He is playing Protoss right here to the south of the Terminus SE versus his opponent and teammate Bling, the newest addition to Team Dignitas. He is in the orange trunks and he is playing Protoss as well. Both these guys are, needless to say, in the ground. And Masters League, I might add. Bling's actually fairly high up. I believe he's about 110 or whatever. So he is an exceptional player. As far as I'm aware, everyone at this tournament is in the Grand Masters League. And it certainly shows. Unfortunately, we seem to be getting a little bit of lag. I'm hoping that's not going to affect the game too much. Ah, land, land, land. Yes, words that do not really resonate so well with Blizzard. And I wish that they actually did. 
Nariwa was going, well, he kind of transitioned through the four gateway into the st Blink Stalkers, which is always a possibility. When you're building four gates, don't assume that the four gate push is all that's coming. There were all sorts of options. A lot more Protoss are actually building four gates now and then transitioning it to something else because, hey, it's nice to have the option. If you have four gates and your opponent has three, then you can get aggressive. And if your opponent has four gates and you have four, then you'll also be able to hopefully warp in and counter. It's a good idea. Works. Does the job. Nani, while the scouting effort doesn't find his opponent right now, he will eventually. He's heading over to the top of the map right now. And we've also got Naniwa with his gateway on the way. And a fairly early assimilator right here for Bling, actually. A little bit quick in comparison to Naniwa, who held back just a little bit. Not a huge deal, admittedly. Bling having a look around and seeing what he can see. Can't spot his opponent's base just yet. He'll figure it out soon enough. Now the thing is, does Bling have anything he could really do against Naniwa? Will he go for a four gate? I wouldn't blame him if he did. An actual four gateway push as opposed to what he did last time. The problem is that Bling was unable to pull it off last time and end up transitioning into a robotics facility, which actually doesn't work for him. He didn't really get anything out of that whatsoever. He was unable to bring out enough immortals to really do any damage to Naniwa's Blink Stalker attack, and that really was it, as far as I could tell for him. So it's whether or not Naniwa concedes the map control, I think, as to whether or not he's going to be able to execute a classic four gateway push. He does have the second gateway on the way. However, he did get that before. Mm, yes, he did get, start building that one before his cybernetics core. So I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like he would really want to go into that. And of course, it doesn't really make any sense to build it before that in that situation. There we go. Two gateways up. Looking to get some Stalkers on the way. Could be transitioning through to Twilight Council. Looking for three gateway Blink Stalker or something along those lines. We will find out. There are many possibilities at this stage of the game. It could go any way. Naniwa continuing to chrono boost out that warp gate. Is he going to do it again more to the point? Yes, he is. So, once again, a four gateway possibility for Naniwa. But we never know. We don't know what he'll transition into, assuming that he decides to do that one at all. Keeping an eye on his opponent. Another gateway coming up right now for Naniwa. Second gateway. Are we looking for the third? Yes, we are. There we go. Three gateways. Doesn't mean the pressure's coming in, but if he can gain map control, he'll certainly do it. And why would you blame him for doing that? Bling is keeping an eye out. However, his map control is not in a good state. He does have Stalkers on the way. He's already got three on the field. He's got another one coming out now. The three Stalker push is not all that effective, really. It's not been shown to be amazingly effective in a tournament environment, but it might be able to do the job because the usual push is... You see, Nanimo actually only has one Stalker and a Zealot. Looking for the interception, Bling and might be able to grab it. They must have seen it, or did he? They're actually on patrol right now, and Naniwa's probe going forward. It will be sniped off by Bling. I can't see any other option right now. And the question is, what will Naniwa do? Naniwa, wow, okay. What are you going to do with that, folks? What are you going to do with that? You're going to place it. Is he going for the pylon? Of course he is. Naniwa actually has managed to scare Bling back into his base because Naniwa has a pylon in the back of it. Oh, dear God. Oh, that's that over, really? Or is it? You never know. Bling might be able to hold this, but it's looking fairly unlikely. A four stalker pushing to warp in around the back. Pylon at the front, pylon at the rear, and volleyed and thunder. And Naniwa annihilating Bling right here. Huge amounts of firepower being rained down on him. And Bling with very little left. He's only got a Stalker and a Zealot pulling all the probes off the line just for the sake of it. Another warp in Zealots right in there. Naniwa draws him into a trap. And Bling's going to get sliced into tiny little kibbles. That's all I can really say about that. Once that Stalker goes down, that's it for Bling. Down it goes. Sentry down as well. GG, ladies and gentlemen. Nice, quick fake-out maneuver there by Naniwa. And defeating his teammates soundly and with very little fanfare.